Hello and welcome to this new video in the SQL playlist. In this video, we continue further with the date functions. Towards the end of the last video, we have seen date functions which helped us to extract various components of date, namely year, month, and day. Now, in this video, we are starting with the completely opposite thing. We want to construct a date out of components. Earlier, we had a date and we were extracting the components. Now, we are doing the opposite. So let's say you have readily available year, month, and day in integer formats, and you want to construct a date. You should never concatenate them because you will always end up messing the date and the time formats, and it will not be a recognized or a valid date. Instead, you should use the functions which SQL Server has provided. So for here, there is a function called as date from parts. This accepts three inputs. I would have loved this inputs to be named as year, month, and day rather. So remember the format year month day this returns date time so pass the year then pass the month and then pass the day so this will construct a date out of these three components and return a valid date time for you do never concatenate this is one another thing is in case you wanted to construct a date as well as time together so let's see how to do that so for this there is another function we can use this date time from parts that is the only difference here you will have seven inputs three for date which is year month and day and four for time which is hour minutes seconds and nanoseconds so it will be somewhat like this way this is the date part then comes the hour part mention this in 24 hour format so let's say say 2 pm which is 14 comma 15 minutes 45 seconds and 0 nanoseconds and let's run this so you will see this is the difference between date from parts and date time from parts remember that moving on further the next function is also an intelligent one which will help us to derive the differences of the parts so let's see what this scenario is this function is date Diff. So it will give you the difference of the various components. So let us understand this has three inputs interval, start date, end date. So here you could do control space again, you will get the same what you got in date name and date part. So let's say I type in year and I mention a start date over here. So mention in single quote, let's say 2010 0, 01 0. And the end date I can either say a get date or I can say any specific date let me mention a specific date let's say 20 20 12 30 so what this will do is it will take the start date as this end date as this and it will give me the total number of difference in terms of years if i run this this is giving me 10 years so the total number of difference of years is 10 years in each one of them if you try to narrow down the difference, you will understand how this works. Let's say if I say 19 over here and run this. So this will give me 1. What this means is this will give you complete number of years. Not the entire thing, the complete number of years. Similarly, if I paste this and now you would have understood. If I use double M, what it will give me, the difference is 23 months. Very useful functions. No need to do minus and then divide by 365 and then divide by 12 to get this. And if you wanted the day difference, you would simply say double D. This is 712. So quite useful. The next function is just like date difference. This is a function called as date add instead. Here again, interval, but it is slightly different. So interval again is the same thing here here instead of the two dates it will accept only one date and the second would be increment so let's say i say one and here i pass a date let's say 2020 zero, 01 13. what this will do is it will add one year in the start date that you have given so i gave 2020 jan 30 and it added one year and returned 2021 so Paste this. Let's say take another example. If I say 10, 
So the only component that changes here is the year part. The day and the month remains the same. Now, if you have understood this, very easy to understand the other things as well. If I say M and try to add 10 months, so this will return me 2020 November. We had Jan. It is quite smart. It will flow into the next year as well. If I say 15 months, so it will return me April 2021. And similarly at the end, if I try to add days, 13 plus 15 should return me 28, 28th of Jan. More than 15 days, if I try to add, it will flow into the next month, which is 12th, that is 7th of February. So this is how you would use data function. But let's say there is another scenario. What in case you wanted to go backwards? Date add is adding and going further. So in order to go backwards, what can you do is, let's say I wanted to go backward one year. Simply you just say minus one, that's it. And if I run, you can see the output 2019. And I will change this as well. I wanted to go backwards 10 years. Minus 10, 2010. Scroll down. For months as well, you could do this. Minus 10. So no problem of calendar because this is automatically taking care. So it is going now 10 months behind, which will flow into March 2019. And finally, I can copy the date as well, the day part minus and this will flow back into another month another year which is the previous 2019 December so this is how you could use date add either for going backward or forward so it plays dual role and remember when you are quoting anything about date remember there is difference between date and day so date is nothing but this entire thing which has three components year month and day and day is only the digit like today is 15th of Jan, that's a day, but the day is 15th, that's how you should remember. And moving on next, now you can also do formatting. There are various formats like year, month, day, most of you would be aware. So there is a format function which is available that we will see, which will help you to change the formats of the date. So let's see the format function, we'll say select format. This function helps us to change the format. So here you pass a date and in the second, you pass the format. So I'll pass the current date or you could pass any column name from the table. And format, let's say I want to change this format to DD, MM, I mean the short name for the month. You should write that in caps for month and for date and year, you should write them in lowercase. So keep that in mind, run this. So now you get this in DD, MM, YY format. So this is how you could change formats and there are various formats which you could try out. Remember, with every function, wherever I have hard coded a date, you can pass the column, the date column from a table directly as I have shown you earlier as well in the last video. Or you could pass a static date this way or you could pass the current date. Now, just like date add, what it does is it helps you to go forward and backward. There is another function as well which I would like to cover. This is your month. So kind of end of month, you could remember this as. Again, I would have loved those parameters to be named specifically. So those are, this function is accepting two things. First is date time and there is integer. So let's say I want to know what is the last day, the last date of the current month. So current month, first you pass the current date and here I will pass zero. First, let us execute this and understand. So I am getting 2022 Jan 31st. So EO month is nothing but end of month function. It accepts two things, current date, or sorry, a date, and then how many months you want to add. So whatever date you pass, if you say zero, it will not add any month. It will just straight away jump to the end of the month for that particular date. However, if let's say you want to know what will be the end of month for the next month. So you say current date comma one. What this will do in the background is it will add one month for you and then 
return you the end of the month. So partially it will work like date add with month. It will add one month and then whatever that month would be, let's say today is 15 Jan plus one month will be 15th of Feb and then it will jump to the end of that month, which is 28th of Feb. Similarly, you could add any number of months. It can also go backwards for you this way. F5. So it can go one month behind, which is 15th of December 21 and then jump again to the end of the month. You could do many things with this. Let's say I wanted to know what was the first day, the first date of this current month. So I can just get this and add a plus one at the end. So remember, EO month is going to return a date. The upper text, the upper query was returning me the last month's last date. However, if I do a plus one, it will jump to the new one. Here you will have error. So what you can do is pass this in date add. In date add, add days, increment one day to this and then close the bracket and then this. So don't get confused. What will happen first is the EO month will return me 31st of December last year. Then I'm incrementing one day which is giving me this one. Similarly, what I could do is if I want the first date of the next month, simply what I could do here, I will say zero. What this will return me is current month's last day and then I'll increment this by one. This will return me first of Feb. So this is how you could combine things together. And finally, in this video, sometimes you would want to check whether the date you are writing is a valid date or not. So you could use a function called as is date. So this accepts a date. Let's say I write this way. This will be a Boolean function. It will return you in this way. Let's say I pass something which is unacceptable. Let's say 30. So this is written me true or false. True means one, false means zero. So this can also be helpful. If you use a state again, and see, this is returning you integer. It is not returning you where care or n where care. So one means true, zero means false. So that's why you are getting those integers instead of values. So these are the most used functions which I have put together, although they could be more as well, definitely they are, but I've tried to cover most of them in the last two videos, including this and the earlier one. So that's it in this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.